In this video, I'm going to explain in detail how I made this artisan keycap set. The first thing to know is that using this method can cost between $100 to $200 per keycap set that you make, depending on the mistakes that you made and whether or not you have to remake the mold. Your choices in creative materials like paint or ink can also affect how much each set costs. Every part of this can be hard to pull off, so I suggest a good level of determination as you will make mistakes and may feel discouraged. If you'd like to watch a quick overview and don't want the details, you can check out the video linked above or skip ahead to the b-roll. The first thing you will need to do is choose the keycap profile that you would like to use. Many times with artisan keycaps, a taller profile like SA is used so that there is more room for activities. I wanted a lower profile, so I chose to use crystal crown keycaps because the walls were nice and thick, and they had a seam that would help me gauge how much resin I was pouring. I did end up using a little UV resin on the bottom side of the keycap to give more dimension to work with. After I poured and cured the UV resin, I did make sure that none of the keycaps interfered with the switches. Because I didn't want to spend a few months pouring the key set one key at a time, I created a singular mold of the entire keyboard. To do this, I had some plexiglass cut at Lowe's with the dimensions of an 80% keyboard in mind. This came out to be 14 inches by five and a half inches for the main plate and the walls that were cut were at least an inch and a half to two and a half inches wide with the same 14 or five and a half inch length. The thickness of plexiglass that I used was roughly a tenth of an inch to an eighth. You could do thinner for a more flexible plate, but I wouldn't advise to go much thicker because it gets expensive and it makes it harder to separate the keycaps for the other part of the mold. I attached the keycaps to some plexiglass using some clear craft glue. Super glue made for plastic did also work and so did hot glue, but with the hot glue, spots leaked into the keycaps and it was much harder to remove the keycaps. When using super glue, if you don't put much glue, they aren't too hard to remove. I do advise on putting glue around the entire perimeter of the keycaps by just drawing it out on the plexiglass first. I did also buy some Elmer's clear craft glue, but ended up not trying it. After all the keycaps were glued down, I attached the sides of the plexiglass using hot glue. When working with silicone, you should shake the catalyst before adding it to the rubber. Use the correct ratio of catalyst and make sure that you let it cure at the right temperature. If any of these three are not done, you could be left with uncured silicone. The right temperature is between 74 degrees Fahrenheit and 80. I ended up having to buy a little space heater to make this work. When mixing, you should try to use movements that don't introduce bubbles. I ended up using a popsicle stick and very small circular movements. Try not to lift the rubber, but be sure to scrape the sides of the container. I used two containers of silicone for the first pour and two for the second. However, I do feel that it is possible to use one and a half, but to me, it wasn't worth the risk. After letting it cure for 8 to 12 hours, it should feel firm to the touch. If any part of it feels squishy, just let it sit longer. You may be able to use a container that you don't have to break, but hot glue is easy to peel off and reapply, so I broke mine. On the part of the mold that was the top surface while curing, you may need to trim the edges a little bit because capillary action can cause the silicone to want to travel up the walls a little bit. This side will now be on the bottom and it could cause the mold to become concave and the keycaps may come loose. Sometimes keycaps may try to float. Like when I tried using some amazing remelt mold making material, I don't suggest trying the hot melt other than just to practice mold making. It may be possible, but I don't feel that the melt mold maker would work very well and get stuck in the stems. However, it is reusable, so it might give you a feel for the hobby. Placing the keycaps back into the now overturned mold, I sprayed mold release onto the silicone and the overturned keycaps. Be sure to keep the spray about six to eight inches from the surface as it will allow for better atomization of the liquid and better coverage. 
I let two coats of this mold release dry. Now for the trickiest part of the mold making process for keyboards. I definitely suggest using the same plexiglass container that you use in the first part of the mold and just turning over the plate. However, it will take slightly more precision and patience for the walls to make sure that it is sealed nicely and not deforming the silicone or leaking. In some of my later pours, like this one, I did use corrugated plastic, which can be a very quick way to make a container, but I found that the corrugations allowed too much leakage along the sides. If you plan on reusing the mold to make more than one run, a cleaner pour and box is nice to have. It also allows you to see the two halves of the mold. Once you have created the second box and are ready to pour, make sure that all of your keys are properly seated and begin mixing. At Hobby Lobby, they have these little plastic pipettes that are really easy to cut and allow for thick liquids to be pipetted. You will need to glob a little bit on every stem and then use a toothpick to coat the inside of the stem and hopefully get all the bubbles to come out of the stems. After being sure that each stem is filled, you can pour the rest of the silicone onto the keycaps and start mixing the other half. After caring if you're able to seal the side walls to the silicone, it should just peel apart at the seam. However, if it didn't seal, you will need to find the seam to get the peel started. Don't force the silicone apart here and take your time as there are going to be areas that need to be finessed a little. Sometimes you may need to come at a different angle. After the halves are separated, the fun now begins. Start with spraying some mold release just on the half that had the stems and let it dry. Mold release does blemish the surface of resin and you'd need to polish it to remove those spots. The first half of the mold, there isn't much for the resin to get caught on, so it really isn't needed here. Once the mold release is dry, you can begin to mix the resin. I found that for this set, it would take roughly 180 milliliters of resin, roughly 60 milliliters for the first pour and around 120 milliliters for the second. Using the plastic pipettes, glob some resin into the stem portion of the mold and use a heat gun to heat up the resin, allow bubbles to escape and flow easier. You can use UV resin for the stems, but I don't recommend using it for any other parts as the thickness and length of the UV resin that you use does change how the resin can cure. After I finished with the stem portion of the mold, I pipetted the smallest layer of resin into the first part of the mold so that it touched each sidewall. I set both of these aside to cure for roughly 16 hours, and after they cured, I inspected them. I ended up painting on the first half of the mold with acrylic paint, and if you mess up or get it on the sidewalls, it's easy to scratch up and it doesn't stick to the silicone very well. Once I was done painting, I mixed the other 120 milliliters of resin, dropped in some alcohol-based ink, and poured into the first half of the mold. This, however, didn't work as planned, so I don't recommend a dirty pour with such a large amount of resin. If you do a larger amount, you may want to layer the ink so that the deeper part of the mixture still has some color. I filled each keycap mold with more than enough resin as I wanted it to overflow into each cell and push out bubbles. When placing the second half of the mold, be sure to place it such that bubbles don't get trapped. That's why I laid it from left to right. After this is left for about 10 hours, the resin is mostly cured. Hard to the touch, but can still be deformed a little. Working with it in the state can be risky, but can allow for mistakes to be corrected. I would suggest waiting to around 12 to 14 hours, maybe even a whole day the first time you pour resin and adjust it accordingly. I like being able to cut the resin with razor blades and not have to worry about chipping off too much. Using a razor blade and cutting the keycaps out allows for cleaner edges. You also may want to put the keycaps on a keyboard to ensure that each key has clearance to function and doesn't conflict with the other keycaps. Three or so of these keycaps had bubbles that affected the aesthetics, so I used UV resin to reflow the voids and cure them into place. Without further ado, here is the sound test. <laughs> 
I did try making a two-piece mold with a plexiglass top like Jedrek 29T by super gluing just the little stem parts of the mold, but it was really hard to line up the 80 plus parts and the mold kept breaking. But his great videos on resin art helped to inspire me to make my own keycaps. Also, I would just like to say that if you don't already know who Hippiotech is, please check out his channel as he is really nice and has a fun time messing with keyboards. If my video was helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.